Hello everyone and welcome to Crispix Germany. In this video we have another 4090 from Inu 3D and this card is damaged during the water block installation. Very short story that the card uh, is used for the past couple of months with a stock cooler and the customer noticed that the temperatures are very high and that's why he decided to buy a water block to cool the card better. Something went wrong and uh, on the first try he noticed that something smoked here on this area near the fan connectors and after that the cart is no longer working. His decision was to assemble the cart with a stock cooler and send it for a warranty repair and the result is uh, right here on the back plate. Stickers with errors pointing the warranty seals that they are broken and this is not warranty repair. Since the last video I talked to uh, the service center for Europe in O3D and we were discussing what is happen if you break your warranty seal, if you open your card or um, you just take your card right here with your fingers, it's very easy to damage the warranty seal, but this doesn't mean that you don't have warranty anymore. You can contact these guys from the warranty service, not the seller. You can contact the warranty service from Inno 3 d directly. I will leave the email in the description below, you can send your card there with broken warranty sticker, it's not a problem. They will take a look, they will take the time to make an inspection of your card. If your card has no visible damage, no water damage, no broken PCBs, components and so on. This is warranty case and they will fix it or send you a new card. But if your card is damaged, if your card is missing components, scratched, uh, the crystal is broken and so many things. So basically if you damaged your card, this is not a warranty and they will not fix it, they will ship it back to you. My next question was what will happen if you install a water block to your card and let's say for example you're using your water cooled card for the next six seven months and something happened and the card is no longer posting, no longer functioning. Do you still have a warranty or not? The answer is uh, very simple. If you're buying uh, the, the water block from Alphacool, you have a warranty. So you have a warranty from Inno 3D. If something happened in the warranty period, you can send your card there with the water block, with the mounted water block from Alphacool, and they will take a look. Why Alphacool? Because this company is making the official water blocks for Inno 3D and they say that these water blocks are perfectly matching the PCB and, and they are sure that the water block cannot damage the board. That's why if you want to water cool your card, this card, go to Alphaco and buy the block from there. You should have no problems with the warranty after that. Let's take the multimeter and start measuring. Uh, black probe goes to ground and we're measuring the resistance with uh, the red probe. On the 12 volts from the motherboards we have uh, kilo ohms reading which is normal continuing with the 3.3 here is very low around 7 ohms this is not a straight short to ground for example if the capacitor is shorting the circuit this uh, reading here should be between 0 and 1 ohm but here we have almost 7 from experience this means that some chip is causing this but we have to find out Continuing with the 12 volts from the power supply, we have a rising reading, which is normal. The second inductor, kilo ohms, and the third inductor, also kilo ohms. So the 12 volts from the power supply are okay. Measuring the 5 volts, around 1.5 kilo ohms, again normal. Continuing with the memory rail, and here we have around 2 ohms. This is very, very low. Uh, the reading here should be 150 plus, uh, so the normal reading is around 200 ohms and here we have 2 ohms, so the second problem with this PCB and that's why I chose this uh, card for a video because it has multiple problems and I'm not sure if this port is fixable or not, we have to find out now together. Continuing with the PEX rail, here the reading is normal, around 30. And we have two 1.8 volt rails here on the bottom side. The first one showing uh, 2.3k and the second one is showing uh, 
5.7 ohms again very very low reading this rail should be around 600 ohms and this is our next problem in this pcb this is very interesting because we have very low reading on 3.3 memory rail and 1.8 volt rail after water block installation and this is something strange let's switch to the microscope make a visual inspection in this area uh, I'm, I, I want to know what is going on here because the customer said that something smoked there. Let's see if, if something is burned. And let's start from the corner where we have our uh, power supply input here, the 12 plus 4 uh, pins connector and going down. Power stages on the left side, here on the bottom side we have the 5 volt circuit, nothing visible. Here we have the BIOS chip and also our two 1.8 volt circuits and this one on the right side is with a low reading but no visible damage here. Let's check the GPU crystal on the corners because many times after a water block installation I see uh, chipped e edges from the crystal. Here we have one of the power stages for the memory rail which is also with a very low reading. And taking a look at the RAM chips for uh, visible damage, they are looking okay. Going to the left side, the other power stages, and nothing unusual here. Let's go to the fan connectors, where the customer said that something smoked, and here we have the first problem. Uh, this component here is end gate, and what... Uh, uh, what is the function here is basically here we have the pin number 4 which is completely burned. Uh, this is the output, this is the PVM signal for the fan. Here comes the PVM signal for the fan and telling the fan how fast to spin. On the pin number 5 here we have the VCC voltage in which is 3.3 volt and this is most likely the reason why we have a very low reading on our 3.3 volt rail on the SWOT because this component here is damaged. On the pin number uh, 1 and 2, we uh, they, they have the same rail here. And here comes the PVM signal from the GPU chip itself. And the output is right here on pin number 4. The pin number 3 is ground. This is basically how this component functions. After solving this burnt component here on the fan connector, I called the customer and I asked him what he did because the water block has no fans. And he said that... Um, the, the water block has a um, LED strip with the same connector, the same size connector and also with four pins and he decided to plug the LEDs right here on the fan connector and this was a very bad idea because I think what happened is that uh, he sent 12 volts so one of the pins here has power for the fans, 12 volts and he sent 12 volts to the PVM signal connector which may burn the GPU chip itself. Uh, for sure, the component between the GPU chip and the fan connector is damaged, but we have to remove this component now to measure the pins, uh, the signal coming from the GPU chip, if it's still good. And also, I think this will solve our problem with the lower reading on the 3.3 volts here. I'm going to, to remove this component uh, with my hot tweezers. I don't want to use hot air in this area. Just applying a little bit of solder. And just like that, it's gone. Now the pins here on the bottom side are bridging. I will go one more time and make it better. And let's take the multimeter and make a measurement. As I said, on the pin number 5 here on the top side, we have the 3.3 volts coming from the SWOT. And we still have a very low reading. So we have uh, more problems on this rail. And the pin number 1 and 2, we have the signal, PVM signal from the GPU chip. 5 kilo ohms are looking promising. We should have no problems here. So we have to find out why we have a wall reading now here. Uh, on the second fan connector, we have the same component here. And I think this can be the reason for the wall reading. So the fast way is to remove this component. Again, we have 3.3. Oh, look at now. We have a kilo ohm reading. So this end gate was also damaged and we find this problem very fast without using the thermal cameras. Here again the PVM signal 
5 kiloohms, pretty nice. So the first problem is solved. Our 3.3 volt rail is free, it's no longer shorted. Let's find out why we have a short on the other rails. In order to find out where is our problem with the memory rail and 1.8 volt rail, I'm going to inject 1 volt on each rail and uh, we will see what is getting hot with the thermal camera. So let's start with the 1.8 volt rails. I'm injecting voltage now. And what we can see that one of the RAM chips is getting hot on the corner. So if you see the screen on the left side, I am removing the probe now and attaching one more time. All right, the second RAM chip on the left side is getting hot and let's apply voltage to the memory rail. One volt again. Oh, look at again the same chip on the same spot. So the cause of our problem is this RAM chip. And let's take a visual inspection on this RAM chip to see if there is something damaged. Uh, we are on the same corner, so the left side, first and second RAM chip, exactly this one. The thermal camera showed us that uh, the hotspot was around here on this corner. But actually I cannot see damage here on this chip. It's nothing visible. I will turn the board around to see on the bottom side if we have something there. Let's focus and again here we have a lot of capacitors on the bottom side, but nothing damaged and it was clear with the thermal camera that uh, the RAM chip itself is getting hot and not something under it. I will show you the PCB with a different camera and here we have the RAM chip, the second one. Uh, nothing visible, the RAM chip is not damaged, but the thermal camera shows that it's getting hot when applying voltage. And that's why we are going to use the rework station now to remove the RAM chip. And now we have the RAM chip removed. Let's take a look at the PCB. I have already cleaned the pads. And we can see that uh, everything looks good. We have no damage on the PCB. And the RAM chip on the bottom side is looking good. Uh, actually right here is the corner where it was getting hot when applying voltage on this corner. But it's absolutely no damage here. And here on the top side as well, nothing visible. Let's measure the resistance of the memory rail. 56 and rising. This is very good reading. And the 1.8 volt rail. Around 570 and also rising. Very good readings. I'm happy with that. And from here, I want to test the card first without RAM chip. Because uh, I, I want to be sure that the GPU chip and also the other RAM chips, they have no faults and the GPU is recognized in the system and also without faults. I can expect faults on, on this missing bank here, but this is completely normal. If everything else is okay, we can solder a new RAM chip and test the card one more time. And now we have the card uh, plugged in in, the, in our test machine. The card is connected to secondary device, not primary. And of course, we don't have picture from the card because we're missing one of the RAM chips. Uh, let's dump, for example, the training status. And we have a result. This means that the card is recognized and the first uh, bank right here, F1, has a fault. And this is our missing uh, RAM chip. This is completely normal. And all other, they have warning because uh, F1 is missing. Let's scroll up. And here we have again F1 completely missing. And the most important part for me is that all other RAM chip have, have no errors. If this is true, we can continue with soldering a new RAM chip. I can see a small errors right here on B0, but this is not such a big problem. Uh, we can uh, test the card further after soldering F1. The RAM chip is just soldered with the machine and now is the best time to solder the two end gates because the board is still hot. Uh, here we have the new RAM chip. As you can see, everything looks good. Let's go to the fan connectors and solder our two end gates, applying just a little bit of flux. I have two new end gates here on the side. Place one right here and on the other connector. Again, I'm, I'm going to use the hot tweezers.
Okay, the first one is soldered. Let's continue with the second one. We can take the multimeter and the most important thing to measure the memory rail again. Here we have 15 rising, 1.8 volts, 560, it's a good reading, and measuring the 3.3 volts, which was shorted before. And now we have around 13 kilo ohms. Everything looks good. We can plug the card and test it one more time. Now the machine is running, but this time the card is plugged in uh, like a primary device. And as you can see, we have a picture from the card. This is a very good sign. And let's dump the training status one more time and take a look. This time we don't have warnings and faults. Everything looks just fine. And I can assume that uh, the GPU is working. And the next step from here is to clean the card. And we have uh, one more thing to see if it's working. And those are the fans. Uh, with damage like this on the fan connector, is it, it is possible that this PVM line going to the GPU chip is burned. So the GPU chip is damaged on this line. And we no longer have a PVM signal for the fans. Mm, I talked with the customer and he told me that he doesn't care because he will use the card with a water block. But we still have to check that. So let's attach to the, the, the stock cooler and check the fan spins. As you can see now the fans are spinning and I have already tested the fans multiple times. Measured also the PVM signals coming from the GPU chip on the both fan connectors and everything looks fine. We don't have a damage on the GPU chip. So actually those two uh, end gates, they saved the GPU crystal, which is very good. They were like a fuse in this case. Uh, I'm very happy about this card. The card is now fixed, working, everything is fine. And uh, with, in case like this, with multiple damages caused by the customer, I, I, I want to mention that. And uh, this for sure was not warranty case for Inno 3D, this card is obviously damaged uh, by the customer and the, the manufacturer is completely right to, to refuse the warranty for this card. Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you need a repair, check the links in the video description. If you need parts for your project, check our webshop GPU Fix and we will see us in the next one.